Why, hello, friends. This is Seth of the Cygnus LPs, here to bring you another episode of Spyro Enter the Dragonfly. And in this episode, well, we are going to be in the Dragon Realms for all of, like, 20 seconds as I leave towards this pyramid here. Huh, pyramid. It's like Spyro's ever-elusive spiral pyramid he wants to build, but, you know, not made of a spiral. I guess this is his, it, it's his inspiration, just l l let's contemplate it, because Spyro probably loves contemplating it, going, yeah, imagine if that thing were contorted in a spiral fashion, it'd be pretty great. Yes, I agree with you, Spyro, but alas, we gotta go talk to this little mouse guy before we get into any of that stuff, so what do you have to say? My contraption is breaking! Step right in and it will transport you somewhere really cool. At least, I think it will. So wait, it, it can either transport us really cool, some someplace really cool, or someplace really warm or really deadly. Either one, well, we are a cold-blooded creature, I would imagine, so I guess it would be kind of better to not end up in a place that's cool as opposed to warm. But whatever, let's go into this contraption that our dragonfly is built for him, and okay, we're floating. I don't even know what to think of this. Yes, welcome to the Jurassic Jungle, the final area in the game, actually. Yes, we've come this far, and there's a thing here. Looks like we should be able to break it, because, you know, it's a cracked wall, but I guess the cracked walls being breakable logic only applies in the Thieves' Den. I suppose. Makes as much sense as anything else. What do you have to say, Mr. Whiskers, I believe it was? Aha, Spyro! The R-1000 and the T-Rex 1000s have escaped from their inescapable cages and are running amok through the jungle. Please stop them before they destroy the rest of the science labs and all of our research. Maybe you should reconsider naming it the inescapable cages if they can escape from them. I don't know, just just sounds about right to me. Uh, anyways. No problem. But say, what's a R1000 something something? Yeah, that's actually a really good question as well, Spyro. Not as good as mine, though. Oh, well, to put it in simplified terms that even a dragon can understand... Hey! ...mechanically enhanced nanotech propulsion-oriented riptox, which uh, we've been working on here in our labs. Uh, quite the state of the art, I might add. But, uh, very nanotech propulsion-oriented riptox. Okay, I'll, I'll pretend I understand what propulsion-oriented and nanotech have to do with each other. Anyways... Oh, really? And how exactly would I go about destroying these things? Well, we did find a flaw in the R1000 models when they were uh, exposed to sub-zero temperatures. Perhaps that information will come in useful. <laughs> no problem. I have just the right breath to chill them out. Great! On the other hand, the T-Rex 1000s are quite vulnerable to electricity, yet we've not been able to get close enough to them to zap them with an electrical charge. Alrighty then, so ice and electricity, got it. Why are they named 1000? You'd think he'd be in the year 2000 already? Hmm, maybe dragons secretly existed a thousand years ago and they just wiped out all existence of Spyro. Maybe this is secretly Earth. And maybe that means that if Spyros and the, the Yetis in Spyro Land are Crash's ancestors, that Crash Bandicoot lives somewhere out there today. I don't know, enough of that speculation. So they escaped his inescapable, yes, inescapable cages. I don't know. Okay, I can kill them with fire, so I guess I'm just forgetting the whole thing about... Did I go through the pot? You can't go through the pot. Yes, so his inescapable cages are escapable. I don't know what I was expecting from a mouse with a cat's name. <laughs> whiskers, I'm sorry. I guess mice do have whiskers too. That pot just got exploded and it doesn't have whiskers, so that's probably why. Maybe Spyro is like... I don't know. Spyro wishes he has whiskers, yes. And we will kill this thing because Spyro wishes he was a cat and he does not want to look like... Hey, what is that? It looks like a... Salamander? I think it's supposed to be a salamander. I'm gonna call it a Komodo dragon just cuz it, it looks kind of like it could be a Komodo dragon without the dragon part because there are actual dragons in here so who needs a wannabe dragon like a Komodo dragon? I don't even know. 
But we will continue over here anyways, and oh, find a treasure chest. Yes, um, uh, if you're not exploring in abundance, you can probably miss that treasure chest. I recommend that you don't, because then when you're looking for a treasure chest, you'll be like, Oh my god, where does this key go? I don't know where to put it. Does it go in here? And you'll insert, quote-unquote, the key into the lava, and that'll be the end of it. And you will not be able to 100% the game. You'll probably be really sad at that point, but, uh, I don't know. It's kind of your fault for thinking that the lava looked anything like a keyhole in the first place. So yes, this is the, well, it's, it's actually a really cool area. I really like this area. It's one of the other areas in the game that kind of has the polish I would expect. And yeah, it's just overall cool. What does this guy have to say? Kids, still fresh three days. They're following us. Hey Spyro, I've been studying this temple and it's quite fascinating. Yeah, okay, um, he's been studying this temple, and it's fascinating, because it looks like a pyramid, not spiral, of course. Oh yeah? How so? Well, I believe that these strange drawings on the walls are a clue to something hidden away in this temple. But I can't quite decipher them yet. Alright, so he can't decipher the strange drawings on the walls. I guess we're gonna have to do that for him. Spy... Sparks, of course. You would think only of treasure. Yes, and from what I have been able to decipher, it seems that the gems on the statues inside react to heat. Perhaps you can figure out the rest, Spyro. All right, so it seems that the gems on the statue inside react to heat. Okay, so I guess we know what to do there. Yeah, they're not holding our hands at all. Yes, so Jurassic Jungle is a pretty cool place. I see these things actually look like robots, but those ow! I didn't know they could shoot lasers. You didn't tell me that. Jeez. Okay, so you know that would have been nice to know when we were going after these guys that they can freaking shoot lasers at us. But nope, they're just pro nano propulse stuff. Yeah, because that's supposed to scream laser to us inferior dragon minds, according to him. Anywho, we should just not even kill these things. Like, F him. He can do it himself. Anywho, I'm just kidding. We'll go around here and just feed on the butterflies in the salamander because the salamanders are apparently too big for Sparks to swallow, even though he can swallow an ostrich mole. So I don't see how they're too big for him to swallow. Heading up in here, we will find the hieroglyphs. He didn't call them a hieroglyph. He called them a thingy. Yes, that's totally what he called them. Very scientifically oriented words indeed. The drawings on the walls, cave drawings as they are, and we will freeze this thing. I don't get why you can't freeze these dragonflies to stop them from moving, but apparently bubbles are the only effective things when you can apparently freeze solid objects within a matter of seconds. Except dragonflies, of course. They're too good to be frozen. They have like internal body temperatures of a billion degrees. Anyways, we caught Doompa. I suppose that would explain why they're called dragonflies. They have the fire inside. Anywho, heading up here, you actually can find the key really early on to that chest. So you might as well just go back now and get to the chest, but we're going to be able to get there going on the way back anyways. So we won't matter too much with that. So what you're going to want to look for are these things on the walls right there. And like I said, this is one of the things that I say that made these kind of have more polish. Like this level as in general has more polish than the others. You have some interesting puzzles. So we got this thing. As you can see, there are two dragons on the thing. We've also got this thing. As you can see, there are four dragons on the yellow thing. So green two, yellow four. And I think you get where I'm going at from there. So I guess we just have to head up with green two, yellow four. I'm sorry, my commentary's gonna suck while I try to remember this, even though I doubt they change. I think it's a preset order, so you could practically look up a guide if you were that kind of person. But I'm not going to, so these ones also have four, huh. I remember there's something to that, I believe. This one's three, definitely, and this one's one. So red one, green two, blue three, and then those two are four. So red, green, blue, and the other two, I am not quite sure. I'm just going to play it by ear. I know there's actually something to them, but I don't know what it is because I'm a dumb dragon. Yeah, Mr. S S rat person. We'll see what a dumb dragon can do. I believe, is there a dragonfly down there? Nope, there's just a green gem. It tried to trick me. It wanted me to think it was a green dragonfly, but no. 
those developers were mischievous. They were like, we'll make the green things very trickable. And by trickable, I mean trickify trickifier fire for frictional. Yes, that's totally it. And yes, so now you're gonna want to go back here. And we're gonna do it in order. So I believe it was red, green, blue. Red. Yes. Heat it up with bubbles, because they're sensitive to bubbles, not heat. Yes. Maybe you are a dumb dragon, Spyro. I've always been hinting towards it, but I never actually meant it until now. Anywho, we are going over here and green. Oh, it's glowing. It's glowing. We're gonna make it. We're gonna make what? Apparently we're gonna make something out of this. Yes, they were, they, these are gonna become our colored Lego blocks that we had to burn out of their pedestal. All right, so now there are two more. There's the yellow and the purple one. The yellow one, as you can see, there is a fifth dragon inside the gem. Okay, yeah, that's what it was. So inside the gem, there's a fifth dragon. You don't want to miss that. It might not be the most obvious thing in the world, but that's probably what makes this a decent puzzle. And we will burn this and burn the other one, and it'll be a fun time for all, like, crashing into the wall, because apparently Spyro loves to crash into a wall while he tries to do something that he's supposed to do. And... Whoa, that's... That's really interesting, actually. Um, apparently... Okay, so... Wow, that's that's interesting. Apparently, there is some kind of teleportation lullable device in here. Because teleportation lullable is actually a thing. Now, apparently, the dragonfly just teleported out once we activated the machine. I guess it was an awesome portal machine of awesome. I don't know how many more times I can call this portal machine awesome, but I guess... I guess it's following up with the portal being an awesome game. I don't even know what I'm talking about anymore. So let's head over here and start talking about things that do not involve panels with dragons on them. Because, you know, Spyro wants to be the only dragon here because he is the ultimate dictator. And he does not like having to rely on other dragons and multitudes of other dragons to solve puzzles for him. Totally. That's what's going on. Even though the laziness we realize he goes through every day is probably going to counteract that, considering he'd probably love to get other dragons to do his work for him. Uh, what do we have here? We have the- actually, I'm curious- no, I want to shock you. You can shock it. Yeah. I don't know, it's- I've always had a trouble with metal enemies getting shocked to death. Because, you know, they're a conductor, which means there would be no resistance to electricity, but whatever. We'll go with it. I guess we will end off the video here. In the next episode, we will continue on into this place of awesomeness. I'm gonna keep calling this the place of awesomeness, apparently. It is just indeed the place of awesomeness. Jurassic Jungle. It's like Jurassic Park, but with more awesome. I will see you guys next time.